Black Caucus members who are facing investigation. Joining me now is Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, who represents the District of Columbia. She is also a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congresswoman, appreciate your time. How did you feel about President Obama's response to that? Is he throwing Charlie Rangel under the bus? I doubt it. Uh, I, I hope that the president's doing what most Americans do. I uh, looked at uh, what has come out, and it's called a statement of allegations. And if you believe that allegations uh, should run their course for the average person, I guess you ought to believe that for the average member of Congress as well. Do you, so, think, do you think Charles Rangel should step aside and not go I'm through not, this trial? You just heard what I said. <laughs> These are allegations. I'm not telling any member or his constituents what to do. That's not what we do in the House of Representatives. Do you think, and, do, you think the, do you think the Congressional Black Caucus is being targeted? Oh, I don't have any. I, I don't have any notion uh, that our own members of our own caucus are after us. So no, I'm not into that camp. I don't think that's the problem. Nor do I know that there is a, a, a ethical problem here. I hope there is not. All I know is that there are a statement of allegations. The allegations have to be proved, and I think we ought to let that run its course. Well, the investigation has taken it further than allegations. These are, are charges. Is it well, these are charges, and charges are allegations, I remind you. I'm too much of a lawyer to regard charges as a conviction, and I, I don't see how anyone can say anything more than that. Politically, how damaging is this, in your opinion? I don't think this is going to have anything to do with us in keeping the House for three reasons. Uh, our members have protected themselves. We've raised twice as much money, we on the, in the House of Representatives, as the Republicans have. And if you put the House and the Senate together, they're still 30 uh, percent behind us. Uh, our members have, not, have uh, uh, for example, close to Washington, there are four really endangered re Democrats, if you look at them, except they've all raised upwards of $1.3 million. Their opponents, each of these four Democrats have opponents with less than $300,000 in the bank. But there's another reason why I think they are not going to lose their seats. Many of them have protected themselves. Progressive Democrat though I am, I understood why they voted against all the controversial yeah. issues. They voted against health care, stimulus, TARP, you name it. So they protected themselves. So I say to their constituents, hey, what's to vote against? And the third reason is that the House is a eminently district by district place. That's why so many of us get reelected. People does pay it, attention but, to their districts, but, and that seems to do it for us. Okay, district, uh, ninety-nine percent of the time. District by district, uh, certainly that is the, the case. But after the speaker has gone on record about draining the swamp, and then now two of the most visible people in the Congress are facing ethics allegations, how can that not affect the election in some in, in some areas when you know the Republicans are going to be using it back home? Yeah, and we're going to be fighting back. Look, uh, I've got to ask you, just what is it, 10 days after the Shirley Sherrod debacle? You want to judge these members before this has run its course? If we didn't learn anything from Shirley Sherrod, uh, 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 a terrible, terrible uh, experience, it's that don't, don't go around well, judging well, people until you hear what the evidence if is. If I may respectfully respond to that, I, personally, I think there's a hell of a difference between Andrew Breitbart and an ethics investigation in the Congress, because if the ethics committee is at the level of an Andrew Breitbart, we got some serious problems in the Congress. The and word is if, and the if is if these allegations prove to be true, then you ought to ask me the question you just asked well, me, not I, before. I, well, no, I, I think I can ask it because I think that Charlie Rangel no, you're asking and, and, and also Barbara, before. Uh, uh, the, uh, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Waters, they've been around long enough to know right and wrong. Would you? Can you agree on that? No, I don't know that right or wrong is involved here. These are accusations. And don't try to get me to tell these members who have been accused but not, in fact, been convicted what they ought to do. If you are accused, I want you to know whether I get on television and tell you you ought to, therefore, uh, you've been convicted, which is what you're doing to them. I, look, I, I'm a, a lawyer, a civil liberties lawyer, and I'm not going to drop that when members of Congress are accused just as everyone else are. Congresswoman, I think you've given us a good sense on, on how strong the fight back is on behalf of these two uh, public servants. I appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much. Certainly. Certainly.